You've got the original VW engine. Now, you hold a special place in my special place. But you're gonna need this modification too, because, well, you're gonna have even more problems to get to. So back here, where the engine used to was, I have a 16 gallon aluminum tank. Now, we need to get the fuel pump out of my drive line. I was gonna mount it back here just because it's a wall burrow and screaming for its life is basically just minimum of what these things sound like. So the further I can get away from my ear holes, the better. Unfortunately though, people seem to have a lot of issues with these cheap quick latches, especially when you're searching by sketchiest on Amazon or cheapest. Now, I'm sorry, I meant to say most cost conscious, which in this instance is just Chinese crap. But in my experience, that issue is basically because this nut well, it was tightened by small Asian girl hands. And you want thick boy daddy Asian boy hands, but every version you see on Amazon is gonna be a knockoff of the actual quick latch. That's, that's the real name of it, not just like a verb. That's the adjective noun adverb. Unfortunately, for the price of one, you, you get one compared to four. Now I've used both the authentic quick latch version and China. And aside from actually tightening down the back nut, I can't really tell a difference. The issue is this back nut here kind of supports the internals of the little guy. And if that button falls out, well, you're gonna have two problems. A button that fell out and whatever you had this holding on, well, she's done, Jim. So go ahead and spin your bad boys out, clean all the grease that they use from assembly off those threads because you don't want this part coming undone. You do need grease in there for that button. You don't want that getting sucked, but then go ahead and lock it down with some thread locker and some American man hands or, well, American hands. Now that you've got your quick latches actually assembled properly, we're going to build some brackets for whatever you're going to be mounting down. Because I'm kind of a lazy piece of shit, I've chosen just angle iron, and that'll bolt this whole area up real good like. So now make sure you've got enough space between whatever you're mounting and your mounting bracket and the studs so, well, you can fit the back of the quick latch. If you don't have enough space, you can buy these buckets online. I know they're kind of pricey, but if you're doing this and you got to do it, then just, just do it and don't look at it. Just don't even financially, don't, no. You should be used to that, we're, we're fine. But not only did I choose angle iron because I'm lazy, I wanna reinforce this whole area because, well, the passenger side looks pretty good, but the driver's side, some pieces of this metal fell out. So rather than fix it the proper way, I figure if we just layer enough steel on there, that'll take care of it. You wanna check out my hood latch or trunk latch or filler neck, hat, whatever this is called. It's just a ratchet strap. I did spring for the automatic one because um, thought that'd be nice. So the original panel on this car is actually spot welded in. I got my angle grinder out and some safety squints, got all that nonsense out of here, but basically this area right here slides between the fenders. Now, if you're working on a modern car and you want to make your front bumper like disconnectable, this would be a very equivalent to if you've got that little catch on top of your front bumper that like dives into your fender that snaps it in there. This would be a good time to remove that excess material. Though it doesn't really matter if it's plastic, but metal panels grinding back and forth. That's what she said. No, they like to rust as you can imagine because you're on this channel. So I just like cutting it off. Now, while I used a cutoff disc to get rid of the shit I didn't want, I'm gonna have to use a file or preferably a belt sander to get it smooth. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I cannot cut a metal in a straight line unless I'm using like shear, which I don't have. So I basically, nothing in this shop is straight. And then throw the brackets or whatever you need on your car and take the mounting studs for the quick latch itself and put it so it goes just above your mounting surface of whatever panel you're trying to hold down. Now you've got easy access to the back of your panel. Just take like a silver Sharpie and draw around it and you'll be able to see where you need to drill your hole. But if you don't have access to it and you're like sealing a compartment with this quick latch, we'll just put a little bit of latex house paint and like a contrasting color on top of your stud and then just set your panel onto it. Make sure it's aligned and when you pull it up, you'll probably have a good idea where you need to drill the hole. Now I know you want to just drill a three quarter inch hole, but Hear me out. Drill an eighth inch hole and put your panel back on there. Take a flashlight and look around in there and see if you can see the stud. Because if you can't, well, you gotta do a little bit of tweaking. And now is the time to do a tweaking with a eighth inch hole versus a three quarter inch gash in whatever panel you're messing with. Now, once you're sure you've got your hole in the right spot on a plastic bumper, well, you can kind of just use a hole saw and 
car ramrodded in there, don't have to worry about the surface, you know, getting all dented up unless you really mess it up. But on metal, uh, I'm, I'm not fond of using hole saws, especially on modern cars or cheap German shit. The teeth just seem to deform the metal too much. So I'm gonna use a small stepped unibit. Yeah, you like that, don't you? <laughs> Nice. Instead of a large stepped unibit. <laughs> yeah, you don't like that. Well, you might. I don't know. Whatever. I like to use this one because in between the steps, there's less steppage. So it's less likely to grab and pull the metal up or dent it down. Then I just wander the hole out to three quarters of an inch. Now is the time to check the fitment of your panel. But before you actually go to bolt it down, well, this is a wheel spacer. We're not going to be using this, but buy a nylon washer and then just open up the center three quarters ish. That way, if you are bolting it into a piece of sheet metal, it gives it a little bit of fender washiness tacular. And that'll make it so you can actually hulk these things down with a ratchet and not have to worry about it kind of deforming as the panel goes in. Now I chose nylon just for corrosion resistance. I didn't want another layer of steel that's unprotected with like a zinc coating or paint. Uh, it's smushed in between all there to grow rust on the inside. Speaking of bare metal, you're gonna need to prime and paint the holes that you drill through if you're going in the metal. Get your holes ready, I know you will. Because if you don't, you can get some rust in there. Again, if you're doing this plastic, doesn't matter. But we're gonna go ahead and paint this panel with some random blue paint I found at the hardware store that's pretty darn close. Well, or at least close enough for what we do here. Now for the back of this panel to protect it from road debris and garbage. Well, we're gonna be installing Rust-Oleum truck bed coating, Rubimento para Caja de Caminalencio. Which I believe is Spanish for. Um, it works pretty good, but be careful using this stuff in like a fender well. I found that the textured particles actually grab dirt and hold it there. And then if you've used rubberized undercoating, you know that's that starts for a bad sign. But uh, on an interior panel or something that is outside but doesn't actually get tire crap thrown on it, works perfectly good. Super strong paint. I like to drill the holes for these just a little bit wider than they need to be because that'll give you some play once you get around here and you can bend panels a little bit and get things over edges and ledges to make it so... <laughs> you get stuff like that. Okay, all right. We've come full circle today. We started a project, we didn't let the paint dry long enough and we put it together and now it's great. So if you want to see more of this garbage, DM right into your DM hole. <laughs> well, just do that thing. Okay, that's a nice six out of 10 for you there, big 10 floor buddy. And I'll do every couple of weeks probably try to do something. I don't, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I got a really fun video brewing up for you of fabricating with wood to make like panels, speaker boxes, gauge clusters, all that garbage. But also making all the complicated things with a 3D printer. Uh, that shouldn't get at least three two of you interested in some of our garbage here. So you, have a good one. So for my build, I already cut this panel out with an angle grinder and some squinty, squinty sweats. Squinty sweats, squinty, squinty sweats, squinty specs. Safety squints, there we go, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>